So who makes things? That's good. Who wants money to make things? Who's raising money to make things? Who has raised money to make things? Oh, that's awesome. I'm running out of limbs. So, yes, I'm Marcus from Ninja Blocks. That's our pretty logo there. And my talk's really going to be on getting money. I didn't know any of this three months ago. So that's kind of good because it means that you guys can learn all of this too. So we make the Ninja Block, which is a tiny, powerful computer that can sense and affect its environment. Because we have people like me in the room, I can actually tell you what's inside it. It's a beagle bone with an Arduino daughter shield. And we have a web service that backs all of that up that connects your Ninja Blocks and the connected devices within your home to various web apps and other connected devices. Enough about that. So I think one of the reasons why they asked us here is because we've been able to get funding. We've gone from zero, nothing, starting a company on January 3rd to $1 million of funding, which we're pretty happy with. So as you may have guessed from my accent, I come from a land down under to the land of opportunity to get that funding. That's actually wrong. We don't ride our kangaroos like that. We <laughs> Everybody knows you use the pouch. <laughs> so. And so why are we coming to the US for funding? Well, this demonstrates our fauna and our funding environment at the same time. <laughs> Crocodiles eating sharks. So. We're lucky, we've come to the US, we have been able to get some funding. We started by going through an accelerator called Startmate, which is similar to YC or Y Combinator, if you've ever heard of that. We then ended up doing a Kickstarter project where we raised some more money. And from that we got some angels and ultimately some VC. Uh, that's what they all look like, they've got big rooms full of <laughs> cash. So. All of these steps sort of dovetailed into each other, and I'm going to give you just my brain dump of how we got from one step to another. So I knew nothing about venture capital, as I said before. So this is my VC in one minute. So you need to work out what VCs you want to speak to. And you do that by going to Crunchbase. And you look at products like the MakerBot. And down the bottom on the left-hand corner, they've got this little thing called funding that shows you who has funded that product. And so there's people like, well, for the MakerBot, Foundry Group, True Ventures, that kind of thing. But it's not entirely accurate, but it gives you enough of a gist of the types of companies that you want to speak to. So from our journeys, we think that these guys, in no particular order, so all the VCs in here don't feel bad about this, these are the hardware-friendly VCs. And they're actively reaching out to hardware folks. We'll have all the slides up so you don't have to take that down. So. If somebody could have prepared me earlier before this whole thing, I would have said, hey, give me all the questions that VCs ask. And these are the questions that they ask. <laughs> uh, so my team has sort of collated all of these together. So you can actually download all of these, but they're actually really important questions like, you know, why can't your customer live without your product? That kind of thing. So yeah, go and have a look at them. But if there's one question that you should have an answer for, it's when the VC asks, what can we do for you? Have a prepared line. They might not be able to do anything for you. Our prepared line is, well, we'd love to be introduced to people who can create third-party connected devices that we can get talking to Ninja Cloud. And it's important to do this because nine, 90 out of a, 99 out of 100 VCs is not going to sign up for you, but they will all want to be your friend, just in case you get big. So that's the VC questions. Well, what should you ask the VC? Well, you've got to find out what their position is. Not all these VC guys are made equal. So there's these analysts, associates, senior associates. They're great to speak to. They're great influencers within a venture capital company, but they can't really write checks. Then there's these guys, the check writers, who can actually do stuff and you know, make decisions. And then there's these guys in between that can go either way. So get the slides, note this down. It's interesting to know. Just my biggest bit of advice here is be nice to everyone, because sometimes the business cards are old. And uh, 
the, the crazy thing about the valley is that you've got these guys that are 25 years old and they're really high up in these VC companies and you're going, you must be the intern. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> the other question to ask is how large is your fund? So typically a VC, this is what I've been told, a VC will say, okay, I've got a $200 million fund. And the reason why I ask that question is so you can say, when they ask you, how big is your business going to be? Uh, it's going to be a $200 million business, or that's the exit that we're going to be going for. This is just advice that I've heard, and it's, so far it's worked, so, worked okay. The next question to ask them is, where's your fund at? Because they have funding cycles, and their funds might not actually have any money in them, or they might not have money that can actually do follow-on investments, which is important if you're going the whole Palo Alto model and trying to grow your business crazy big. The other thing you should look at is what deals have these guys you know, done? So go to their websites, go to the portfolio page, and see what they've invested in, and see how you can sort of align your product to what they have previously invested in. Might help you get through. Other questions to ask is, where's your sweet spot in terms of funding? Uh, and these guys are actually the best, or best consultants you can ever speak to. You know, in industry, they would be you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. You can ask them, why did you invest in X? Why didn't you invest in Y? Do you think this market is going to be big? Why do you think this is going to be big? You know, you're getting all this wonderful advice for free. So walking our way down the stack to angels. So there's more than enough angel money. So anybody who put their hand up for wanting to get money, you can just go out there and get that money. I'm from Australia. And I came and I got money. You guys have social security numbers, <laughs> EINs, <laughs> bank accounts. You can do this. Uh, but the trick about angels is they're not really here. You don't take them on for their money. You take them on for their advice. So is Eric Klein in the room? Yeah. Now, he is a great example of an angel. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Great example of this. Remotive? Remotive? came yesterday, oh, couldn't come yesterday to do the demo of their product, but who is there? Their angel with the product demoing it on their behalf. That's pretty cool. Like this guy, if he wanted to get a real job, he'd be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars a year salary bracket. You're getting amazing value. <laughs> okay, next bit of advice, AngelList. So if you don't know what AngelList is, this is a website which is uh, speed dating for angels and entrepreneurs, really. And just check out this website, put your profile up. After two weeks being up on AngelList, coming from Australia again, we filled up our entire calendar. It's insane. Just do it. Um, yeah, they should call it analyst list as well because there's a whole heap of VC analysts and what have you just sort of scouting out AngelList. So I've got a few, pitch, uh, few uh, tips for AngelList. First is put a video pitch up on your page, you know, Kickstarter style, put slides up on your AngelList page. And uh, by the way, this email means that they're interested. We got a whole heap of what looked to be these automated emails, that, you know, the kind of things that you get from Twitter when somebody follows you on Twitter. Well, people following you on AngelList is actually pretty important and you should get back to them. Good to know this now. So angels like social proof like Kickstarter. So who's put up a Kickstarter project? Awesome. So for the rest of them, the rest of you guys in the room, the tip behind that is just play by the rules, which are pretty simple to understand, sort of. So these guys are awesome. <laughs> they sort of went into the gray area by having a pre-existing business. But from that, we have one awesome tip. Come to Kickstarter with a pre-existing polished product, and look what happens. Very cool. So valuations. In my country, I was laughed at when I wanted to raise a million dollars for my company. We're now raising on four. I would say that for most of you guys, aim above four. I can see the VC squirming in the room. Um, <laughs> just aim high. You can always work your way down. Or they will always talk you down. Uh, 
big mistake we did. We, our valuation's way too low. So a whole heap of general advice. Make yourself a pitch, get the Polonizer Universal Pitch Deck. It's 15 slides that have everything that you need in there. You can get it from here. We try to be somewhat useful in this slide deck. And be prepared. So always have a copy of your pitch on your phone, your tablet, your computer. You never know where you're going to pitch in an elevator. You need to have an annotated version of your pitch at all times so you can quickly flick that across to your investor. The best you know, slide decks that you do don't have any words and sent alone are totally out of context. So you need to make another copy of that. You need to have an executive summary that tells a little bit about your product and have all that ready to go. You need to have your own term sheet. You don't want the VCs, the angels, and what have you pushing their terms on you. You want to come, bam, this is the deal. Take it, leave it. <laughs> Not really. And have all these ready to go on Dropbox. You can sync it across everything. And, and it automate and hack this process. So <coughs> use Bitly so you can see if they've actually hit up your link, whether they've just a nice little hack there. And get back to people quickly. It should take this long to write your return email to a VC. Thank you. <laughs> Got any questions? This email address? Cheers. I'm sorry for the guys in the room that received this email. But get back. <laughs> get back to them quickly. It shows that you're on the ball. And so you can do it with tools like Text Expander, if you're using a Mac, Dropbox on everything, Google Docs, it's always there, ready to go. And when it comes to actually signing things, there's a great service called Write Signature that allows you to do it all in the cloud. More tips. I didn't know. How. Listen to This Week in Startups and This Week in Venture Capital. It's you know, by far the most productive thing whilst you're doing exercise. This is, was a little hack for us. We signed up to this thing called Twist List, which meant that we got a little bit of access to the guy that runs This Week in Startups, which is pretty good, and there's a whole heap of angels lurking on that list. Read Hacker News, but not too much. <laughs> um, otherwise, you get distracted and not do any work. Search Cora for all the good stuff, and apply for uh, Y Combinator or Techstars. I would probably lean towards Techstars, not because you're in the room, but because... <laughs> <laughs> They've actually produced hardware companies of, I think they're good. Go to, go to the bolder one, and then you're like right next to SparkFun, and it can only be good. Um, stay friends with the v these VCs. Most of them are going to say no. Uh, actually, hardly any of them are going to say no. They're going to just say, not now. So <laughs> be prepared for that. And yeah, open source what you can. Create, as uh, Tim said, create more value than you capture. So I can open it up to Q&A. Cool. Cool.